All right, hello from Indy. I'm going to do another video. This one may not be a short video. Uh, and I wanted to talk today about uh, Chrysler V8 engine block castings. And I just wanted to set straight some uh, misinformation you hear uh, repeated very often uh, in forums, online videos, whatever. And before I begin, I do want to give credit. Um, a lot of my information comes from a guy named... Uh, Tom Kelly. Tom Kelly was a uh, facilities engineer and a manufacturing engineer or supervisor, I should say, for for Chrysler. And he worked at the foundry. Uh, and he's the guy that would know the answer to all this. And he has shared that information. Uh, and despite that, it, there's still a lot of incorrect information out there. So, uh, Chrysler V8 engine block castings. They were all done in Indianapolis. Um, they weren't done anywhere else. Now, I will say, there's one little side note to that. If Chrysler production could not keep up with demand, they would farm some of the work out to the International Harvester Foundry that was also in Indianapolis. Uh, and that was over on, uh, I believe, Brookville Roads where that was at, I believe. Uh, but regardless, all the V8 engine blocks were cast in Indianapolis. Uh, and I am not aware, nor I've ever heard of anywhere else that would do those. Another note is that you hear often that the blocks were cast and machined in the same location. That is not the truth at all. 100% not the truth. There were no machining operations taking place in the Chrysler foundry. The only work you could even say that was taking place on a block was they could heat and anneal to make minor repairs to a, a block that otherwise was good. Uh, but they didn't do any machining. Um, so all the V8 blocks were made at the Chrysler Indianapolis foundry. That includes your 273, your 318, your 340, and that includes your TA and your race blocks. Uh, your 360, your 361, 383, 400, your 413, the 426 wedge, and the 426 Hemi, and the 440. All those blocks of the muscle car era were cast in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I'm from Indianapolis, of course, <clears throat> it was very intriguing to drive by that foundry for a few reasons. One was the smell. I just... If you're from Indianapolis and you're watching this video and you remember the foundry, you'll remember the smell. It stuck up, stunk up the whole west side of Indianapolis. The other thing that was really neat was there was a massive mountain of used scrap blocks that had been rejected. And I used to always, just that was so intriguing. And I, when I was a young guy, I always wanted to just even get in that mountain of blocks and would imagine what was in there. But the really interesting part was... Uh, they would have them palleted. A lot of the blocks were palleted in an outdoor storage area. And uh, I've heard it said that there was over, at times, over 100,000 engine blocks that would be sitting out there. And additionally, they had a warehouse storage. So I, that just always would blow my mind. When I was a kid, I just knew, you know, all the 440s and the, and the Hemis that were out there. And I used to, you know, how could I sneak over the fence and get one? But they weighed too much. So... Um, so after the blocks were cast, um, they would go for machining and I'm not really going to talk about the machining today. And, uh, you know, a lot, there's always a lot of questions about the marks you'll see on your information pad, the, the numbers, the letters and the symbols. Uh, and those were applied at the, at the machining operations. And I'm not, I'm not going to go into that right now, but the machining operations, the B and the RB engines would go to uh, Trenton, Michigan, and the plant there would do the machining. The 318s and the 340s usually went to Mound Road, and I think the 360s went to uh, Windsor, Ontario, to have the work done. I've heard it said, uh, you know, one guy I was watching online recently was talking about, he was reading the, the engine pad on the side of, uh, of an engine, and it, he said, well, yeah, this was made in cast and machined in Jeffersonville. Uh, Jeffersonville was a assembly plant. They did not do any casting nor engine block machining whatsoever there. That's just not the truth. 
Again, the truth is, if you have a V8 block from that area, it was made in Indianapolis, Indiana, period. That's the end of it. There's, there's nowhere else where they were being done. Um, even years later, I mean, even after production started with the way that they would put them in the yard, I've heard people say that, you know, I mean, into the early 70s, you could still go out there and you could find a 273 or a 361 and like the early 383s and the 413s would still be stacked up. They just had never gotten to them. Um, and the reason for that is when the blocks would come off the line, they would move them. They were called yard blocks, what they were called. And they would move them out into the yard. So they would take a load of yard blocks out and then they would bring more and they'd move more and more and more. Well, they didn't come first in, first out. The first ones that would go out would be stacked up behind all the new ones that were put in front of them. So to get to the first block, they had to go through all the other ones. And so that would explain why you might sometimes have, say, just as an example, I don't know if it was this extreme, but it may have been where you could have a 77 model year car with a 75 model year uh, engine. The fact is that when they needed them, um, they would they would pull the engine off. And when I say they, I'm talking about the machining factories. So, so Trent, for example, if they called Indianapolis and said, I need 10,000 383s, well, they would go out, they would pull them off, they would clean them, they'd blast them to clean them up because they'd been sitting outside. They put them back on pallets, band them, and ship them. And the first ones they got to. So they may have to go through a lot of them to get to those other date blocks. I, I hope that makes sense. To show you something real quick too while we're here is uh you can see on here the date on this is a 400 uh you can see the numbers and then my casting date appears to be what's well, 125 77 uh and then if you go to the passenger side of the car see that this one was made on the day shift it looks like about 11 30 on the day shift in January so a little bit more information and then I'll end this video here um, these are just the production charts one note I do want to make is that in 1964 only the 426 wedge and the 426 Hemi block casting production was counted together. It was not separated. So they made 3,000 426 engines in 1964. And I'm not aware that anybody knows the difference between what was a wedge or what was a Hemi. But that was a one year thing only. Just a point of curiosity, 1966 was the most Hemi. After that, they, they broke it apart and you would get the Hemi numbers. But in 1966, they made 11,000 blocks, Hemi blocks. But then in 67, they made none. They also did no casting on Hemi blocks in 71 or 72. The last year for the Hemi block was 74. So I just thought that was a little bit of inf interesting information. Uh, another thing I thought was real interesting going through these production charts, and these are all in thousands was they made 1.9 million 400 uh, blocks at the Chrysler foundry, Indianapolis foundry, I should say. I find that that's interesting because it's more than the 1.7 440 engine blocks they made. Uh, they made 3.2 million 383s, which is impressive and really impressive. They made 15 million Chrysler 318s.